This video explains the workflow for the 1D profile method in Assure and MR. 1D profile method was developed by Lejic Pope from Amgen. The algorithm is described here in this video and also in these two publications. These publications were used to implement the algorithm. The goal of the profile NMR method is to verify the higher order structure of biologics, for example, monoclonal antibodies. After starting the biologics command, we need to select the reference spectra. The algorithm compares replicates of the reference sample to replicates of one test sample. So if we start with the reference data, I select my five reference spectras. We made five replicates in this case. And then the spectra to test. In this case, I select spectra to test from a failed sample. This is a sample which does not have the same expected higher order structure. The program adjusts the phase of the spectra. To do so, it uses two regions without signals one on the left side of the spectrum and one on the right side of the spectrum. I want to compare the entire spectrum here at the region of the spectrum entry and my broadening factor is used to broaden the spectrum during calculations. Exclusions can be defined if required. But you can alternatively also use the buffer subtraction method which comes together with this software. The calculation is performed and we get the following result. At first, if you look at the table, we have five spectra here from the reference where we know that the structures are correct, and then we have five spectra from our test sample. Now every spectrum is matched to every other spectrum. And with this, we get the matrix of all matching factors. In red, it is indicated that these are the auto matches. These are the matches within the respective group. These are the matches within the test spectra, and these are the matches within the reference spectra. The distribution of all matches are shown in this whisker box. This line is the median. In this part of the table, you can see the matches between reference and test samples. This distribution is shown here. What you can see is that the distribution is outside of the range of the auto matches, so this would indicate that this is a fail sample. We can also see this using the p-value, which is very small. The p-value is calculated from the Wilcoxon Rankesum test. By clicking on the table, you can see which spectra were matched against each other. The black one is, in this case, the reference sample, and the blue is the test sample. So this is the original spectra, phase spectra, convoluted spectra, and the fingerprint. The fingerprint is calculated from the phased reference spectra by having this convoluted spectra subtracted. Of course, you can have a closer look into the fingerprint. Here you see some changes, however they are not that obvious. If you look into other regions, then maybe the changes in the fingerprint are more obvious than in the convoluted spectrum. Now I want to perform the calculation again using a set of spectra which pass. These again are my reference spectra from the reference sample. I will use them. Now I select spectra to test. Now from my sample that passes, there are also five replicates. I choose the same parameters. Again, the calculation is performed. And then you see that the matches between the reference spectra and the test spectra are relatively high. So you can see that the spectra are really within the range of the auto matches. 
auto matches, and between groups. The p-value is much higher in comparison to the fail sample. For further analysis, you are able to export this matching table to Excel, but you can also create bucket tables for statistical calculations for further analysis from the spectra, the convoluted spectra, and from the fingerprint using some parameters. Of course, alignment is automatically available. You can use pointwise bucketing or the special size and scaling of rows is also possible.